You're listening to Catalyst Talks, conversations with change agents, outliers, superheroes, and truly conscious leaders, modeling what it is to be an unstoppable force for good in this world. What lit these catalysts on fire to do their work and what nuggets of wisdom can they share with a world literally on fire? This podcast is for you who cares deeply and seeks to catalyze the world. I'm your host, Stephanie Traeger. I'm a consciousness catalyst and soul coach to superstar change agents in business leadership and life. In this podcast, I wear an eclectic mix of hats, including earth keeper, healer, mindset coach, lawyer, business sustainability, and impact strategist. My intention is holding space for higher purpose, peak wellness, and soul mastery so we can live in harmony with ourselves, each other, and nature. The whole idea of Catalyst Talks in these conversations is to awaken consciousness, unlock higher purpose, and learn what it really takes to catalyze change in that scale. Subscribe to our new podcast and help us grow. We're aiming to reach a million people at least in 2020. Let's wake up the world together. Hi, I'm Stephanie Traeger. Welcome to Catalyst Talks podcast. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. I am celebrating that we have been putting this podcast out into the world for nine months. So I'm celebrating. This is almost like this gestation period of what this podcast actually is. It was born in a moment. I wasn't somebody who was like, I want to have a podcast. I never said that. Really, it just happened in December of last year, maybe mid-December. I thought, oh, I'm, I'm supposed to have a podcast. And somehow it all came together really fast and we put our first episode out. I think it was the end of the year or maybe even early January. Here we are nine months later with this wonderful podcast and some amazingly powerful, inspiring episodes that leave you with a lot of information and insights to chew on. So this is a really pivotal moment in the world. We are all undergoing a huge transformation, whether we know it or not. And so I'm calling all of those of you who know it, who know that something is shifting outside in the world and feel that something is shifting energetically inside as well. You are feeling it spiritually, you're feeling it mindfully, you're feeling it energetically, soulfully, and you're really, really ready to embody this next level of alignment in your life with your values, with your mission and what you're really here to accomplish. Now, higher purpose is different than purpose. And it wasn't necessarily always different than purpose, but we are in this world where taxonomy is a thing and we name things and we give it meaning and then it's commercialized and then it has another meaning and then we put our identity on top of it and then it has another meaning. And so the word purpose has so many meanings already. And so we're going to unpack that in this next six weeks because I am bringing you a series. It's called Unlocking Higher Purpose, a six-part series, and it's going to be on this podcast And if you really want to take advantage of this podcast, you can go to the show notes and you'll see the link there to sign up for the actual six-part series where you can get a whole lot more than just these podcasts, or you can just go to stephanietrager.com and sign up on the homepage there. And we're not only going to be giving you these beautiful content, and I'm going to share with you in a minute what it is. I'm so excited. Over the podcast, we're also delivering, I'll be doing lives on Facebook, on social media, And you're going to have this opportunity to engage, to ask questions, to take away a lot more meaningful, juicy, juicy, transformational support, basically. And you'll also be getting emails weekly, one email a week, I promise, not more than that, with questions for you to journal on and go deeper into this inquiry around what is ready to expand in your life. What are you ready to step into in your life? What are you ready to own in your life? And so this week with the juicy tips and coaching questions are going to be linked to all of this content. And so if this is something that speaks to you, definitely sign up because there's a lot more than just the podcasts, even though there's going to be a lot of really juicy, juicy, juicy takeaways from here. And what this six weeks is all about, we're going to start today talking about breaking down, speaking your truth. Okay. We're going to then go into identity and soul. So important. Identity is such a big one right now. Peak wellness and purpose, soul mastery and purpose, deeper impact in business and tapping into higher purpose. So this is a six-part series, and all the episodes will be here, so stay tuned. And please join me on this journey. It's so much more fun when I get to engage with you guys, and I get to hear what's landing for you, and what questions you have, or what you're chewing on. It doesn't even have to be like a one-way thing. You have valuable information or insights or wisdom you want to share to the conversation. So come join me on Facebook if you're not over there. And all these links are in the show notes as well. Please join me on Facebook and Instagram. And that's where we're going to take this conversation a whole lot deeper. And definitely sign up at stephanietrager.com to get 
all of this to your inbox once a week in a very wonderful, juicy, and inspiring way. Because you know what? The biggest transformation happens when we step away, when we do the work, we take in the information and then we chew on it, we digest it, we integrate it, and then we actualize on it. And the emails are going to have really juicy coaching questions to help you go deeper and dive deeper and dive deeper. And that's where the magic happens. Now we're going to dive into speaking our truth. This is the content for today's episode. Why is it so important to speak our truth in order to tap into and unlock our higher purpose? When we don't speak our truth, we are slowly cutting away who we really are. We're slowly diminishing our knowledge, our wisdom, our understanding. We're diminishing who we really are when we don't speak our truth. And sometimes it just shows up as playing along with something or saying, well, I don't want to speak my truth because I don't want to be judged or they're going to put me in a box or this and that. And listen, I'm saying this because this was me for so long. I was an activist in my early 20s where it was just like raw truth, no matter what, no matter who you were. And I saw there were some ramifications for the way that I held that back then in my early 20s. And now I've also noticed sometimes I'll be in conversation and I'm judging myself like, oh, I have to kind of censor myself. That's different than discerning whether or not it really makes sense to say something because you know it's not going to actually have an impact. We can conserve our energy and not always speak our truth just to speak our truth, right? Just speaking it to say something or to hear ourselves or to make a point when we know it's not going to do anything. Is there value to that? That's really important. And sometimes in those situations, it's just being quiet is how we speak our truth. That's why I said sometimes it's not speaking at all, knowing when to say no and just not having to speak your truth at all and just saying, no, thank you. I'm not doing that, or I'm not participating in that. I'm not acquiescing to that. I'm not colluding with that story. And we're experiencing that now in a very big way where people are judging other people for choosing a different narrative that's not the mainstream narrative in a huge way that we haven't seen in a long time, I think, in this country, in the United States, and probably in the world. Because right now, there's something we can unite on globally if we have certain opinions about things, right? And I think it's a very important time to just at least know what your truth is and know why it's your truth. Really, really know why it's your truth. One of the most important things is, even if you think you know what's true, and me too, even if we think we know what's true, to be willing to challenge that, to be willing to have that truth be challenged. That's how I find my truth. And often in alternative resources. I like to go to primary sources. If you listen to my episode with Nadine Strassen, my constitutional law professor from many years ago, she was talking about this, about how important it is to go to your primary sources and really where do we find our truth is so important. I have been on this path of speaking and like finding my truth since I was a young child because I just disagreed with the way things were presented to me from an early age. Like, I'm not buying that. No, no, no. Y'all can believe that. I'm not buying that. And I didn't know why. I just felt like that wasn't true for me. You know, whatever that was, it doesn't matter. It could have just been about lifestyles or beliefs about certain cultures that was in the societal conditioning that I grew up with. And I didn't believe that. And so I always challenged it. I was always challenging. And that's why when I was young, I left home and I moved across the country. I was like, I got to go figure this world out myself. I found my way. And even to this day, you know, there was many times where I doubted whether I should be speaking my truth. It wasn't safe to speak the truth. I should say we have so many imprints from our lineage, from ancestral lineage around speaking your truth. Like what culture did you grow up in? Was it dangerous to speak your truth? Could you actually be killed? Because many cultures or in different countries, that's what happens when you speak. Your truth is different than what everyone else is or what's different than the government line or what's different than the narrative of the day. You could be killed then that might be some kind of imprint in your experience right now, just based on carrying your lineage, the imprint of your lineage. And we all kind of do that. We're perpetuating some fears and things that aren't even ours often a lot of the times. And this is the work we do around energy medicine and really clearing all that really isn't true for us because it came from someone in the family or it came from some conditioning growing up or it came from society Our work here, when we're tapping into higher purpose, is to really get real with ourselves and understand what we are accepting as true. This is not only around whether you should take a vaccine or not, whether the water is really safe to drink, whether we're not being poisoned by 
EMFs, whether or not we're whatever, right? Whether or not our food supply isn't completely contaminated with genetically modified God knows what, that's one avenue of truth, right? Whether we are really agreeing with the worldview that our whole society is colluding with and that we're living in, that's one thing. Another thing is to step back and say like, what is really true for me? And that includes about you, about the stories you tell yourself, about the beliefs that you have about yourself and your life and what's available for you to receive. This is where our work is. We are all to be doing this work right now to really shed those stories that no longer serve us so that we can access what is meant for us so that we can rise to the level of our higher purpose. My higher purpose is to awaken consciousness on the planet. Very clear, very, very clear that that is my higher purpose. And how I do that can show up in a lot of different ways. Part of it is speaking my truth. Part of it is teaching and holding space and coaching others in how they can find their truth and speak it, whether it's in you know, being a public speaker, keynote talks, or whether it's in dialogue with a loved one or a relationship, or whether it's in leadership and how do you lead your team or your company. There's so many different ways that we can be speaking our truth. It doesn't have to be activism. It doesn't have to be calling things out all the time. Speaking truth can come from a deeply spiritual place where we're really connected to what is true at the most high level. That is where we're, when we're connecting to higher purpose, it's that spiritual place of truth. What is truth in the purest, highest place? For me, it's nature. I come back to nature and say, what's true here? If we're altering the DNA and the molecular structure of food and thinking that that is good for us, for me, that's not truth. Truth is in nature and nature is just perfect by herself. Nature has so much to teach us. So for me, that's how I come back to my truth. No matter what it is I'm trying to find, whether it's something that I need to be looking at in myself or whether I'm trying to discern what I believe externally, I'll do all this research online. I'll listen to things that feel plausible. I'll listen to things that feel absolutely like that is, I'm not buying that. I'm not acquiescing to that. And then I will go off and have my process in nature and let it integrate and really understand and discern what is true for me. And that is our process. So find your process for speaking your truth. Find your process for finding your truth, but just to accept that something is true because you're hearing it on the news or because the government is telling you that it does not necessarily mean it is true. If you look at the history of this world and we look at world domination and stories and propaganda and how certain things came into being, it was because someone asserted something as true, people perceived it as true and believed it as true and acquiesced to it as truth and then lived by it as a rule or an assumption. That's what a paradigm is. A paradigm is a set of rules, beliefs, or assumptions by which a society or a group lives. And we here in the Western world live in a certain paradigm. And it's a paradigm of how we consume information and how we believe what we hear is true and how we acquiesce to it and live with it and say yes to it and accept it and trust who we trust just because this is a paradigm. And I've experienced living with indigenous cultures in different places in Ecuador, in Brazil, and in Peru, and also in North America. And in my experience, it was spending any time with indigenous communities or cultures, I realized there was something very different, a very different truth available. And I was exposed to this at a young age in my early 20s. And that's when I actually was like, oh, okay, there's a whole other paradigm over here, a whole other set of rules, beliefs, and assumptions about how the world works. Hmm, this one feels more true to me. And that's how I began my inquiry. You know, like what feels more true to you and why? So speaking our truth is saying what you need, when you need it, and why. Okay? It's just like chew that for a second. Saying what you need, when you need it, and why. When you need something, for example, I was with a friend the other day and I was I'm actually going through this very exciting moment in my life. Something big is happening and I was really consumed and not very present with my friend. And we were at this lake and we were just supposed to be spending the day together, but it was this deadline on something I had to make a decision on and da, 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 And it was like a lot of chaotic energy that I brought into the space. We had planned this beautiful kind of deep portal of energy transformation that we were going to spend the day together experiencing. And I brought a whole other energy and I was on a phone call and I came back to our little spot by this lake. And she said to me, you know, I've decided I'm going to go to the ocean. And 
I was like, oh, I'm so glad you made that decision for yourself. You know, she's like, I just really need to be in my energy right now. And I loved that she did that because she said what she needed. That was her truth. And I felt that that was so true for her. How could I be mad at that? You know, there's be people who would be like, what do you mean? You're going to leave me here? You know, really? No. Another part of speaking your truth is being able to witness others speaking their truth honor it and hold it and allow them to have that experience and step into what they need. So as we speak our truth, as we say what we need, when we need it and why, and as we hear what others need, why they need it and hold space for that with absolute honoring and respect, then we get to a whole other level of how we can access higher purpose. Why? Because higher purpose is a function of consciousness And when we are able to hold other people's needs without judging them, without feeling hurt because they need something, because they spoke their truth, there was no hurt to me. I know a lot of people would be hurt by that. When my friend said this, I have to leave. But the way she said it was so beautiful. It was coming from such a conscious place of her heart and her soul and also honoring what I needed then too. And I saw that. But a lot of people might not hear it for that. So it's really important that not only do we speak our truth, but we hear what others' truth is and we respect, honor, and hold it. Even if we disagree, is it really worth it to have an argument about it? Or is it actually just like, okay, I hear you, I disagree, and decide whether or not it's really worth the energy to get into a dialogue? Why would you be getting into a dialogue? Like, know why you're going into it. So that's really important to understand. It's like, say what you need when you need it and why, and be able to hold that when other people say it as well. And not only is it how you say it, it's the words we use to say it. So speaking our truth also includes the vocabulary of increase. Now, this is something I have launched a program four years ago. It's called the Journey of Increase. And in this program, I downloaded this whole thing called the vocabulary of increase. Now, I didn't make up the vocabulary. It's just words. And people use these words and this, these patterns all the time, but it's a way to teach about how do we speak in the vocabulary of increase. Speaking in the vocabulary of increase, and we're going to be talking about this throughout all of these six episodes in the series, is how do we really start to use this vocabulary of increase and speak with certain words? Like we just choose to not even use words that we used to use because we want to raise the frequency. We want to raise the vibration. So speaking our truth about a situation doesn't necessarily mean pointing fingers and calling names. It means really choosing the highest vibrational words, like really words that don't hurt other people. It's words that are thoughtfully chosen and crafted in a pattern that allows the other person to receive this information from your heart and your consciousness versus from your mind and your emotions. So we're going to be breaking that down as we go. We've talked about speaking our truth, saying what you need, when you need it, and why, how we say it, and the vocabulary of increase in order to say it in a way that is received in the highest and best good. And this is so important to unlocking higher purpose because as we evolve in our consciousness and open up to the right energy, like that positive energy, first of all, it's very empowering, right? We're going to tap into our spiritual gifts. We're going to be way more magnetic. We're going to have access to more magical energy as well. And I'm going to explain why, I promise, as we go, but not in this episode, but just know that speaking your truth is about having integrity to who you are as a person. It's about having integrity to yourself as a soul here living this lifetime. You know, you have an agenda here. We all have an agenda here to evolve to express our gifts in the world, to feel fulfilled, to feel like we're receiving what we need and want, to have an enjoyable, desirable experience here, and to contribute, right, in the way that feels fulfilling for us, in a way that feels like we're actualizing our gifts and talents and actualizing on our higher purpose. And as we begin to continue to speak our truth and expand in our vocabulary of increase and call in that which we want, we start to realize that our purpose actually changes. You know, you have a purpose and we're going through this evolutionary time on earth right now. And our purpose is evolving with the earth's evolution. It's evolving with humanity's evolution right now. What you were doing before might need to look different now. Your values might have become sharply clear now, and you're no longer willing to not speak your truth. And speaking your truth is like the compass towards unlocking even more layers of the next level of purpose, the purpose beyond the purpose. Your highest, highest purpose is where you're going to feel like you're making the biggest impact and really living why you came here in every capacity. 
you know, that's the path that I'm on. I'm not there yet. Oh my gosh, not even close. That's the path that I'm on. And that's the path that I'm here to light the way for others as well, to experience layer by layer, purpose by purpose. What's my purpose today? What's my higher purpose? What's my purpose today? What's my higher purpose? And continue in that direction. The next piece is knowing when to say no and not acquiesce to something just because you think you have to, because you don't. We have sovereignty in the United States anyway. It's questionable actually whether how much sovereignty we really we really have. We might think we actually have, but we, we might not have as much sovereignty as we think we have. However, there's absolutely no reason why most of the time we do not have to go along with what we're being told we have to do. And that is just kind of herd mentality. But we were talking about this before. We're listening to the narrative and thinking you have to go along with everything. You don't. If you don't feel like the way this paradigm is functioning works for you, then you don't have to go along with it for the most part. You know, there's options. And so this is really just a deep programming of what we've been programmed with. And this is around the food that we eat, the way that we consume water, our lifestyle, our health sovereignty. Big one. I mean, get into the like industrial health complex. That is not necessarily the only way we to do health in this country. You know, I mean, herbal medicine and natural healing and energy medicine and shamanic healing. There's a million other ways to transform and heal. And you can use a little bit of that and a little bit of that, but you get to choose. You don't have to take a vaccine because someone says you have to take a vaccine. Hey, listen, this isn't an anti-vax thing at all. So let's not put anyone in boxes or anything like that. This is around having sovereignty over your own body and making your own choices about what goes in it, when, and why. And another part about speaking your truth, saying no, when you do it and how you do it is really important. But the way sometimes people will go along with things because they don't want to hurt others' feelings. Like my friend at the lake, she didn't go along with me there because she didn't want to hurt my feelings. She really just spoke her truth and her needs. And the way she said it was so beautiful and coming from her heart that it was like obvious it's in the best and highest good for all of us. So when we speak our truth, and we deliver it in a way where we just know that it's in the best and highest good for all of us, there is a much lower likelihood that that's going to land in a way that hurts others' feelings. I remember when I was younger, I spent a lot of time in Brazil and had a lot of opportunities to stay with different families. And I was a martial artist in Capoeira, and we would be invited to stay in different families' homes all the time. And it's a communal culture, and it's, it's really beautiful. So I remember part of this culture is food. And you know, they love to give you food and feed you. And it's an honor for the woman of the house or the man of the house to feed you. And you're just like, okay, you have to say yes and you have to eat. But I remember at that time I was vegan and I was a really, really very much about food sovereignty and health sovereignty. And so for me, that meant I wasn't eating chemicals. I was very careful about what I was eating. And this was 20 years ago. And that I just, there are certain foods that I just would not consume. And it was about principle. This was a values-based decision. And so I would say, I'm sorry, I'm allergic. I can't eat that. Like I didn't just eat it because, you know, and we obviously have to pick the times where we feel like it's important to stay on your ground and the times where it's important to just say yes, because you want to give them the gift of the graciousness of their offering. That's a, another thing, right? But it's how you say it and how you do it so that you're not hurting their feelings. That's really important. That's what's so important about building this muscle of sovereignty and being willing and able, no matter what, no matter where you are, to choose whether you want to say no and say it in a way that feels like it's in the best and highest good for all and you're not really hurting anyone's feelings. In fact, on some soul level, they're picking up a message that they need to pick up, whatever it is. It's like someone gives you a piece of gum and you don't chew gum because you don't want to eat the chemicals in the gum and you say, no, 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 thank you. And they're hurt. And you know what? They're on some soul level, they are learning from you saying no. They're learning about their own chemicals in their bodies and whatever it is, but they're learning on some level. So every time we stand in our truth and speak our truth and come from love and always come from love and service, what ends up happening is it is in the best and highest good for all. We are contributing to transforming humanity. And it is in our higher purpose is to stand in our truth no matter what. Again, if it's a choice you're making, like I want to give this person the gift of the joy of saying yes and receiving this food, then that's your choice, right? It's in that moment of what's going to feel the best for everybody right here, right now. Not just, oh, I feel bad, so I have to take it. That's not in the best and highest good for anyone on a soul level, on that higher purpose level. 
So I'm breaking this down because higher purpose feels like it's this big thing, right? I'm awakening consciousness on the planet, but it's in those small acts that I do every day when it's, I hold to my sovereignty, I hold to my truths, I hold to my beliefs and values so, so firmly that I know it's in the best and highest good for everyone, even if they don't feel it and know it on this 3D level, you know? That's my higher purpose. So for you, when you're tapping into this, what's my higher purpose and how does speaking my truth allow me to continue to align and step into and receive those gifts that are opening up pathways so that I can actualize on my gifts and my purpose in this lifetime in a way that feels so fulfilling and contributes to society and humanity. And we all grow and transform and the world is better for it. That's the path we're on to unlocking higher purpose. And this last piece I want to dive into. So we went through speaking your truth, saying what you need, when, and why, right? How you say it, vocabulary of increase, really choosing your words consciously. And then we went into why saying no is really important and how not speaking, not even saying anything, but standing in your truth is really important. And how we do that with food and our lifestyle and our health sovereignty and how we can be really true to ourselves coming from a place of love so that we're not hurting others' feelings and we don't ever worry that we're hurting others' feelings because as long as you're using the vocabulary of increase, which is fueled by love, there's no way that you can hurt others' feelings. You're just raising the vibration and holding the possibility that you are empowered to stand in your truth and you're offering that opportunity for them in that moment to stand in their truth and how they receive you. So this next piece is about what happens when we don't speak our truth, when we don't stay true to who we are. We are hiding. We fear visibility. We fear judgment. That's what happens when we're not speaking our truth. I mean, that's why we don't speak our truth, right? Here's what happens, really what happens. It's this cognitive dissonance that plays out because cognitive dissonance, by definition, it was a term coined by a, a psychologist, Leon Festinger, in the, in the 70s. But this is a concept and principle that has existed for thousands of years because ancient indigenous healers and shamans play with this energy all the time. They just don't call it cognitive dissonance. It's called out of alignment. But really what it is, is when you're not congruent with what you know to be true, your actions do not align and they're not congruent with what you believe. So say you know something's bad for you, but you do it anyway. That's a choice, a conscious choice. Sometimes it's not even conscious, we're just subconscious about it, right? We just kind of pretend it's not there and it kind of disappears or we literally convince ourselves that it's not true, that this belief that something is bad isn't true, and then we can go along and continue our path. And we're actually really out of alignment. So what happens when we don't speak our truth, it obviously depends on how big the issue or how big the moment is. It could be something trivial and small and does it really have an impact if we're you know, not always in alignment, even if it's these little small things? Well, if they add up, then we're really not living in alignment. We're not living in alignment with our values. We're not living in alignment with our truth. And when we don't speak our truth in terms of advocating for what we believe in, and it, the advocating doesn't mean you have to be a frontline activist or make your whole business about this thing, even though you could, you know, but what it also means is that we are censoring ourselves. And when we're censoring ourselves, we're usually hiding out. We're not letting our full expression or our beautiful self shine. And that's when our soul fire peters out and we lose our life force energy, right? If we are not actually feeding the fire of our truth, because that truth is what's aligning us to our higher purpose. If we're not feeding that life force energy of our truth, what happens is we end up, our soul just like starts to peter out like the fire in us. It's like, okay. She's not listening to me. He's not listening to me. I'm just going to just, I can't, I can't be in this kind of shadow of this life that's not real. It's not honest. It's not true, right? And not only that is when we are not speaking our truth, we're precluding the world from an opportunity. We're precluding others from learning from us. We're precluding others from experiencing our truth and our passions and our gifts. We're precluding the world from experiencing our, my friend Anne says, our note in the symphony of life. If we're not living our note in the symphony of life, we're precluding the world from an opportunity to experience that, that music, that harmony that we really need to all be contributing right now to raise the consciousness on this planet, to help lift humanity out of this vortex of a paradigm that is no longer serving all of us, right? We want to shift the paradigm. And what it's calling for is for all of us to really stand in our truth so that we can unlock our higher purpose. Now that you've heard this episode 
of the Higher Purpose series on speaking your truth. Now I invite you to go over to the Facebook page. I'm going to post this episode in the page. You're going to see it there and comment on that post. Please share something that you took away from it. Share something that you want to contribute to it. Let us know what your higher purpose is. And please, please, if you're listening and you got something out of this show, you can share it and please rate and review it if you if you can. I really, really appreciate this. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And again, go to stephanietrager.com and sign up for this because it's not just these episodes. If you felt like you got something out of this one, woo, we've got five more coming. You've got time to integrate. You're going to receive some coaching questions in an email that are just going to totally rock your world and help you take it deeper. And you're going to get another Facebook Live or social media live. We're going to be streaming on different platforms, I think. You'll get some uh, some coaching there if you want or some more deep insights. I'm going to really be listening for your feedback. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Sign up at stephanietrager.com. Visit me on Facebook. Let me know that you're alive and you're out there. And let me know if you feel like you know what your higher purpose is. And if you don't, you know what the coolest part is? You get to be in the journey of the inquiry and that, that's why we're here. You know, it's like the journey. It's not knowing or being there. It's the journey. You get to watch all this magic unfold. And if you are there, the journey doesn't end because now we get to evolve our purpose. And we're going to talk about identity on the next episode where we really start talking about purpose identity and what that is versus identity and identity traps. We're going to talk about that and we're going to talk about higher purpose identity. So join me for the next episode as well. And please let me know how this all landed for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you from the soul and my heart. I'm so grateful for you here today. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Catalyst Talks. Stay tuned for what's up next and please subscribe to our podcast wherever you listen. You'll find those links at catalysttalks.com. Join us as we continue this conversation on social media. And if you'd like to reach out to me privately, you can send me a message at stephanietrager.com. Your attention here means the world to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you.